Hello? How you doing? I'm starting soon. I'm still trying to figure out some stuff. I was wondering if I should stream the commentary version on my channel. Or sleep. <laughs> You want to? I don't know if I want commentary version. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> uh, I gotta save the recording. So let me test that. I hope it'll bleed. It, it'll bleed. OBS doesn't crash as soon as I start. It's up to you, though. You can do whatever you want. I just don't think it'll be worth the bandwidth. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I guess not. Right, let me start up. Bill Bleed. Dweem. You would have to do the... um. My Discord streaming? Yeah, sure, stream. Okay, I'll do that. But that would be nice for watching anyway. Nice error, yeah. Uh, show your screen? Yeah. Let me move this. <sighs> All right. Mic's off. Here we go. For as long as I can remember, my family ran what we called a horror caravan. We hauled this house of horrors around from town to town, trying to give people a new thrill, a new nightmare. I kind of like traveling, but all that gruesome gore got to me after a while. My dad was always conjuring up new devices, tricks, and traps, each one scarier than the last. <laughs> Guess who he tried them out on? Yep, me. No! No! I guess it toughened me up a little. I mean, you have to be brave to walk through a den of snakes or try to avoid trap doors to make it to your room. I was a pretty fearless kid by the time I was five, thanks to my fearsome father. He fed on others' fears and was never satisfied. My mom couldn't stand how obsessed he'd gotten, so she thankfully divorced him when I was six. Yet I had gotten attached to horror. 
I remember how that good old Halloween pillow and a hot red water bath soothed me. I think I might major in child psychology. Hmm. So, how'd I do? That was great! I mean, you're the head of the Horror Research Club and... President of the Student Council! It's a given! You win this speech contest for sure! What, Michelle? Why didn't you listen to Erico's speech? I don't need to. I know she'll win. Here, take a look at this. Those are guest invitations to Illbleed. How'd you get them? From a Pepco promotion. Kill! Look, we can win a hundred million bucks there. Yeah, if we can manage to get through the whole park, that is. No sweat. I'm game if you are. Sure thing, I'm with ya! Whoa, whoa. <coughs> what about you, Eriko? I think I'll pass. It sounds too good to be true. Why? You just said in your speech to conquer your fear and surpass the odds. Come on, we can test your theory. Sounds like we're trying to be superheroes or something. It's no biggie. It's just a house of horrors. Probably full of cheesy props and gags. Which proves what's so weird about this. How can a funky place like that afford a hundred million dollar reward? Who knows? Maybe they'll make it take so long to get through it, everyone will give up, go home, and the horror honchos will end up with a lot of free publicity. Or else the whole thing is a hoax, and they don't have the money at all. I agree with him. I'm down with that. I'm not voting or going. For real? Are you positive? You sure? Yep, you heard me. Okay, your highness. Then we three humble slaves shall bring back the 100 million dollars and you'll be sorry. I can't wait to commune with the undead. I'd use the money for a chainsaw and hack my way into fame and fear. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, brother. Okay then. We'll catch you later, Eriko. Let's, Let's go! go! Excuse me, did you see three high school kids around here three days ago? They had special invites.
game, knowing full well that you're going to either win or lose. You never expect to die before your dreams come true. Neither did Jimmy, or his father, Gail Banballo, a Minnesota innkeeper. He set up a secret baseball practice arena in the basement of his inn, where he and his son practiced day after day. Jimmy's hard work and batting skills finally led his team to a state victory. It started out a crisp spring day. But before Jimmy could go outside to play, he and his dad went downstairs to bat the ball around a few times. Upstairs, some teenagers had been playing with fire, turning the inn into a raging blaze that was soon out of control. The inn was a total loss, and so was Jimmy, burned in minutes. Mr. Banbala was so badly maimed, he turned into a hideous monster, oozing and bleeding, snarling and growling like a beast, enraged and bent on revenge. He tracked down the kids responsible for the fire and killed them one by one with a blowtorch. That wasn't enough for Banbalo. He won't leave his inn or his memories, so there he waits in ambush.
Jimmy, it's time for practice. Get out to the training field now. Hey, you're not Jimmy.
Thank you.
Kevin? A ghastly has been detected. Warning. Impending explosion likely with the rise of room temperature. Kevin, are you alright? Oh, uh, what the... Erico! Oh, this is the worst place to be right now. Let's get out of here! Woohoo, yeah! You're our savior. I'll help you any way I can, you hear me? You're crazy.
This is Van Bilo Control Room. Can you hear me? This is Control Operator Jackson. I repeat, this is Control Operator Jackson in the control room. Our oil pressure is normal here. Average electric current is 52,000 volts. Generating capacity of 2,700,000 watts. 10 4, main control room here. Checking the database now. Hold on a second. The pressure on the leg is a bit too high. I bet it's the right leg. Last time I checked, it was a bit rusty. That's all right. It's still within control parameters. Then what are you planning to do for dinner tonight? I'm starving. I think I'll have fish or something. At this point, meat doesn't sound too appetizing. <laughs> yeah, we've got enough meat laying around over here to feed an army of rats. Help! Stop right there. This area is restricted to authorized personnel only. Please! I can't buy that horrid beast myself! I know. Isn't that cool? We spent five million dollars to build this enormous thing we call Banball. It's super alloy skeletons controlled with advanced hydraulics with custom bearings and joints. You're looking at two meters of thick titanium for every bone. All computer controlled by me. <laughs> How'd you like that big sucker, eh?
An RV campsite has been turned into a morbid morgue, covered in blood and the remains of numerous unidentified bodies. It's hard to believe that such a brutal massacre could have happened in this day and age, especially at such a secure location. It only took the rescue crew 20 minutes to respond to the emergency call, but by the time they arrived, it was too late. There were no survivors and consequently no witnesses. So the mystery remains. Who or what could have done this? It seems too massive and malicious for a single human to have done it, or several for that matter. There were dark forces at work here, and no one's talking about it. It happened four days ago, and the place has been dead quiet ever since.
made fun of us Drawn employees. <laughs> Rachel, that Rachel, <laughs> she was always your favorite. <laughs> Drawn worker. I can't even stand looking at you. Get out of here. Don't ever come back. You hear me? Michelle! shown up. God knows what that slimy monkey would have done to me. So that was you I heard calling for help. 
You caught my telepathic message. Great. Let's go. We're almost at the goal. Wait, that's... I was looking for that. It's my dear Rachel's nursing bottle. Oh, how I miss those days. I'd nurse her with this bottle and she'd look up at me. Oh, I guess you're not from the Draught Corporation. Please, come inside. I have something to tell you. Thanks for coming. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Ever since the Drond Corporation cheated me, I've had a hard time trusting anyone. I apologize. By the way, I want to ask you a favor. You seem decent and trustworthy. It's about my beloved Rachel. I wrote the details in my will. It's all right here. Please read it, will ya? Please?
Tell me, man. Dummy man. Look down, dummy man. Ugh. Rachel? Please burn Rachel, please. That giant worm is Rachel?
Here to be okay. Oh, that's a relief. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. Hey, you, young one. Thank you. I'll never forget your kindness.
Sawmill. He loved what he did, but he needed better equipment. He'd make the finest, fastest chainsaw man has ever seen. That chainsaw instantly would tear through wood with a nice clean cut and would make him the envy of anyone in the lumber business. He knew just the tree to cut to prove the merits of his product. It was 800 years old, huge, gnarly, and tough as nails. He took a picture of himself in front of the tree and then started to saw. Suddenly a face appeared on the tree and it swallowed him. He was presumed lost in the wilderness or eaten by a bear. No one cared because he was a loner anyway.
New workers took over the mill and everything went smoothly until seven years later when a hundred workers mysteriously disappeared. The relatives of the missing workers soon began receiving wooden boxes. The moment they opened them, a maniacal wooden doll jumped out and chased the terrified families. They used pans, sticks, or hammers to smash the dolls as best they could. Ironically, those wooden dolls spewed blood, and this freaked the people out even more. They called them wood puppets and hoped they had seen the last of them.
Hello, my name is George McLaughlin. I came to this beautiful forest seven years ago as a woodcutter. That's really all I knew how to do. Who who going to cut the tree, going to cut the tree, and I got to cut the tree, cause I love to cut the tree. Yo ho ho, and I'm out of control, I'm gonna cut the tree.
two line. Confirming defrost. Turbo in full gear. Number 106 entering skinning stage. Okay, 106 has been skinned.
I see you're Erico Christie, and you're 18 years old. From this point on is a hunting area. There are a lot of woodcutters who'd love to axe you wood puppets into little pieces. If you manage to make it through the hunting area alive, you'll turn back into a human again. Remember, as wood puppets, you can't jump. Here's a list of people taking part in today's adventure. These friends will go to hell and back with you, so stick together. Take the list with you if you want. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Get going! The hunting's already begun.
Tschüss.
Phew! I'm sad. I couldn't recognize anything because I had no brain. Calm down, Randy. Everything's gonna be fine. You'll see. Whoa! You're Erica? You came here just in time. I'm sick and tired of looking like this. Let's get out of here!
connection. I mean the cable connection, not the oil pump. No, that's not the problem. Sorry, uh, we're having trouble getting the boss character out. Uh, hold on a second, please. Hey, we got another customer waiting here. Hurry up. Try turning on the switch again. Okay, here goes. Nah, nothing doing. This is gonna be a nightmare. Y you over there, uh, go ahead and jump into it and keep going. I'll try to get it to work from here.
disguise for a mass murder by store manager Donald Cashman, who freaked out after a run of bad business. He killed all of the customers and stole their money and valuables in his warped mind. In his warped mind, he figured they owed it to him since he couldn't make enough money in sales. When 
the police arrived and figured things out, they shot Cashman on sight. That should have ended the terror, but it didn't. The sheer power of Cashman's hatred and his ruthless obsession with money brought him back to life as a horrible monster. He's still making products, but this time he breathes evil into them, turning the products into monsters themselves who suck up a customer's money and soul. Cashman's out there somewhere, waiting for the next customer, as he secretly sits in a safe, counting his money.
I am the cake from hell, <laughs> but I need something more to be a complete cake. A cake I'd be proud to be. I feel like the top of my head needs something glorious, or should I say, glorious to crown me. What do you have that I could wear as a decoration, hmm?
No! No! I don't need this! No! No! I don't need this! Oh, yeah, this is just what I needed. Oh, yeah. 
complete at last! Thanks to you, I'm complete again. Why not take me with you? This head makes me look so fabulously fiendish, darling. By the way, for great strength and energy, why not take a bite of me?
Welcome to Mr. Meat Steakhouse. Hey, I see you brought your own meat. You can grill it up right here on my good old grill. Takes a lot of doing to cook all that meat, mind you. I'll make sure you're well done, too. What you waiting for? Get you and your meat up on the now, you hear? Well, well, you're pretty good. Thanks to you, I can't get any more special orders of meat. That's just great. No more meat. And no use for you, that's for sure. So, scram! <laughs>
but you can't wait to check out my new products. But meanwhile, why not stop by my corner for a real good time? I can't wait for you to stop by and see me. We'll have lots of fun. Promise. Don't be long now. I'll meet you inside. <laughs> yet today. Oops, <laughs> don't pay any attention to me. On second thought, you really should listen carefully to what I have to say right now, as I won't repeat it. Got it? Listen up. You and I are going to play a little game of tag. I get to tag, and you get to run. The battle begins when I tag you. You don't really think it that simple, do you? Here's the catch. I hid four different Marie cards in four different places within this room. You have to collect all of them to open the gold door. You don't have any time to waste because there are strong spiritual powers coming from all of these Marie dolls. Their power will drain you of your energy in no time. <laughs> Uh, you can even die. <laughs> Gotta be careful or boom, boom, out go the lights. Now, let's do it. <laughs>
I hate to lose, but hey, you won, so that's that. I dare you to come to my next fun fill corner. Don't expect me to keep my trap shut. <laughs> Hello! This toy corner is where we'll play hide and seek. I hide, you find me. Simple, right? But if you think I'm hiding somewhere, just survey that area with the A button. But if you scan the wrong spot, you'll be shocked, quite literally. So be careful. I'm going to hide.
hide now. Close your eyes. Don't peek. When I say ready, open your eyes and start looking. Okay, close your eyes. Are you ready? Not yet. Are you ready? treasure you want from this room. 
But don't get too full of yourself just yet. I'll be waiting for you in the next room. <laughs> Again, this will be our last chance to play together. Look, it's a jump rope. All you gotta do is jump into that jump rope as it's spinning around and use that A button to jump. If you can jump ten times without missing, you pass the test. <laughs> but if you get snagged in the rope just once, a poison thorn on the rope will kill you. How do you like that, Buster? You scared? <laughs> Quit lagging and let's begin! <laughs>
This, but you beat me fair and square. Ooh, I feel like such a loser. You can take as much treasure as you want at the exit. Later, Gator.
me at this hour. Yeah, what do you want? I'm working here. Ooh, Jessica, it's you. No, 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 everything's fine. Huh? Work? <laughs> I'm not working. No way. Hey, so why the call, hon? Sure, sure, really? I don't know. I bet you tell that to all the guys. No kidding. Uh, sure, babe, tonight? Oh, I'm there. You can count on it. There's only one more visitor to deal with.
on fire! Ah, the fire! Uh, sorry, I got a fire here. Crap. I'll call you back. Love ya. We have a code 9 here. I repeat, code 9. This is an emergency. Cashman's on fire, and the flames are spreading fast. There's no time. We need to evacuate the visitor now! Roger that. We're activating the emergency escape unit. <coughs> hey, you! <coughs> I'm gonna pull down the ladder. <coughs> you gotta get out of here. Quick! It took place in New York in 1935. America was just coming out of the Great Depression when something happened which shocked the world. The papers called it the Killer Man Serial Murders, which began with the killing of the CEO of Manhattan Mutual Bank. The citizens of New York started to panic as there seemed to be no pattern or motivation for what would turn into 39 murders in less than a month. Since no one knew the killer's identity, people started calling him Killer Man because he always left the same trademark on his victims, a bright red star or killer mark.
Then there was nothing, no more murders, at least ones that could be traced to Killer Man, until 66 years later. He was back. He had to be. His mark was found on the face of a utility repair man near Central Park. The Manhattan Police Department immediately launched a special task force to investigate the case and hopefully prevent such a thing from happening again. Killer man. 
This is not good. Not good at all. Hi, uh, you're one of those part-timers, aren't you? Sorry, kid. I don't have time to chat right now. If you need someone to talk to, give Cunningham a try. You'll run into him eventually if you just keep moving. This can't be happening, man. This is not a good thing. I ran out of killer man, guys. Um, excuse me, but someone got killed in the monitor room. They told me to come here and report to- You must be one of those part-timers. I'm Cunningham. I'm the supervisor of the Killer Man in Enemy Section 5. I'll be right with you. We need to go over employee rules and what work you'll be required to do. Oh, this is Reporter Yorg. He is here to check out our amusement park and actually write an exclusive article for us. Nice to meet you. Uh, you too. First, you've got to remember the basic duties. There's the park facility control room. When you go through the room... Chief! You're not going to believe what happened! What is it? One of the Killer Man costumes is missing. What's the big deal? I'm sure one of you guys left it somewhere in the room. Don't lose your cool. Just take your time and look for it! It'll show up soon. But what if it doesn't show up? There's no way we can just ignore this thing, you know. Each costume costs 20 million dollars. Jason, as you can see, this isn't a good time, as I've got guests at the moment! We can talk about this later, if you don't mind. Oh, and as for you, I'll go over the instructions with you later on. While you're waiting, why not visit the park facility control room? Don't forget the ID card. I guess I'd better tell you where to find it. Take a look by the exit. It'll be right there. Well, Jorg, sorry for the interruption. Shall we continue? Let me show you our monitor room. This way, please. I guess I'll start looking around backstage.
Did you get your ID card? Then go see Cunningham and he'll issue you a code number. You were right about the body. This is a homicide case. Somebody killed him. You should have seen Manager Cunningham's face. He turned deathly white and rushed over to the main office. But never mind about him. Here, come take a look at this. It's a killer star. That's the mark of a killer man. This logo suggests that a killer man is actually the murderer. But here's the catch. Killer man doesn't really exist. He's a fictional character they created for this theme park. It's hard to believe this could happen, but we have a real dead body here with a killer mark on it. All we have to do now is figure out what it all means. Jason? <laughs> Jorg, come look at him! Look! Manager Cunningham! And look, another killer star! Cunningham was shouting out the names Killer Man and Jason. I wonder if the murderer is... Jason? I don't know about that. If Jason is the murderer, then why would he bother reporting to Cunningham about a missing killer man's costume? Well, I don't think a murderer would report the costume as missing, especially if he was going to wear the thing. Wow, Jorg. You sound like Lieutenant Columbo or something. Me? Oh, come on. You think so? Anyway, I wonder why the killer is killing one worker after another. The first thing we should do is find Jason. I just saw Jason heading toward the backyard a couple of minutes ago. 
But that place is restricted to authorized personnel only. We can't get in there.
That's the killer man. Look at the way he jumped. You know, I remember reading that Jason used to be a professional gymnast. So it makes sense that he could pull off these killer man stunts. So does that make Jason the murderer? No, it's not right to jump to conclusions. There's not enough evidence to prove anything yet. kind of move is that? Jason may be a former athlete, but no human should be able to pull that kind of thing off. Not even a pro athlete. I wonder if this means that there is actually a real killer man? No way, that's impossible. I bet he used some strong wire or powerful springs like a magician. Yeah, that must be it. Illbleed has a lot of tricksters and special effects artists. Jason, so you're the killer after all. No, no, it's not me. I, I can prove it. Here. The costume reeks of Cunningham sweat. And there's more. There's no sensor on it anymore. It's been ripped off the costume. Sensor? We used to have trouble with our workers stealing money or valuables from park visitors. So the management attached a sensor to the costumes to be able to track the thieves. But Cunningham's costume has no sensor. This means Cunningham has been... Oh! Ah! Hey, guy, are you okay? Hang on there, buddy, we'll get some help. Meanwhile, what were you trying to tell me about Cunningham? Ah! Oh. That oh. killer man just now was no ordinary guy. He had a strange move. 
I wonder what Jason was about to tell me. Could it be that killer man is Cunningham? Then who was that dead body I saw? I'm going after that killer man. There's no time to lose. Cunningham's body is gone. I thought so. Your theory was right. Well, yeah. Cunningham has been killing the workers for some unexplainable reason. Not only that, he tried to finger Jason for the murders and cover up anything incriminating. Just when Jason was trying to tell me something pertinent to the crimes, Cunningham murdered him in cold blood right in front of me. Way to go, Yorg. It's nothing. Much. Well, what are we supposed to do now? We have to nail Cunningham. He must still be lurking somewhere nearby. Now that you've gathered the clues you need, we're going to challenge your ability to solve the murder case. Try and use your clues to solve who the murderer is. If you come up with the right killer, you'll get a game cash bonus after clearing this stage. So who do you think the serial killer is? Come on, you can figure it out. Can't you? Please, continue to play now. We hope you enjoy your experience.
What died in here? Just about everything, duh. It's a morgue, silly. A morgue? Yeah, where they keep the stiffs. Illbleed is full of dead bodies. More than a hundred visitors die in this park every day. This is where the bodies get burned and forgotten. It's not exactly the high point of the park. This is really weird. It feels like spirits are swirling around my body. I hear ya. It's like a cold mist.
that? I don't think those were costumes. Those creeps were real. Hey!
Thank you. You saved my life. And I am grateful, even though it's kind of embarrassing to get caught off guard like that.
Get a load of that! Jason was right. But why would he kill workers who don't have any award money? Well, that's because... Mm... Aren't you a detective? Shh! Who's that? I hear you! Come out with your hands up! 
So, it's you guys, you dirty rats. Mm hmm <laughs> I see. You're here to get my money. <laughs> no, you can't do this. <laughs> There's 50,000 dead bodies here. What's a few more bodies? Nothing like being part of a crowd, eh? <laughs> please, please don't shoot me. Don't waste your breath, buddy. Nothing phases me. Scott, Jeff, Martin, these workers were all killed by the spirits of dead visitors. They possess a killer man's body and use him to carry out the kills. Except for the second murder of Cunningham. Cunningham tried to frame Jason for the deed so he could grab the award money when no one was looking. Unfortunately, Jason discovered Cunningham's killer man costume, with its sensor removed. So... Cunningham decided to kill Jason, who managed to survive the attack. That explains why Jason's attacker moved differently and used a different weapon than the other killer man spirits. It was Cunningham in the killer man disguise. The tables were turned when the spirits of the dead visitors got the best of the impersonator. Ill bleed. What a scary place. But what is more scary is how a human soul can be so full of hate and anger. Is this what you're going to write your article about? Yes, if I can make it home alive. The headline will be Revealed the Real Culprits Behind a Homicidal Theme Park. I see. What's wrong? 
Mm, nothing. Ah, this mysterious theme park, Illbleed. Our investigation is almost over. The Michael Reynolds Museum is nearby. Let's go. Popular series Toy Hunter is now a fun attraction. It's based on the new episode, Cork Goes to Hell, that's not yet released. In other words, in this attraction you'll be able to find out what happens in the new episode of Toy Hunter before anyone else. In the last episode, our hero, Cork the Toy Hunter, had defeated the Cactus Man of Mexico, and no one had seen him since. 
The story begins where Cork returns home for the first time in three years after a long journey. His home is a toy box full of fun things. There, Cork is reunited with his fellow toys. He thought he could go back to living peacefully as his owner Henry's favorite doll. But that was not to be. Something unbelievable happens to Henry. As a result, strange things happen around Cork. Cork's new adventure is about to begin. This attraction is a storytelling attraction that accurately reproduces this new story, Cork Goes to Hell. Here you'll assume the role of Cork and make your way to the end while fighting against horrible enemies. This attraction is not something that you merely sit and watch. The characters that appear and the settings in this story are all real. So if the enemies get you, you will die. So come and enjoy Toy Hunter, as if your life depended on it.
Howdy, boys and girls. Isn't it fun to be me? Yeah, I'm having fun too. Now, I'm gonna tell you how to play the game, so listen carefully. You're about to enjoy Toy Hunter's new story, Cork Goes to Hell. Well, I know you have no idea what the story is about, and don't think you can learn as you go. Uh uh uh. Why? Well, before I get into that, it'd be a good idea to check out this here horror monitor. I'm sure you already know what that blinking light is, right? Yep, it means a weapon is hidden. Then, how about this? This is called a story mark. What does this mean? Well, doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure it out. <laughs> That's right. Whenever this story mark shows up, that means the story is hidden at the spot. Now try to get close to the place which indicates the story mark. Some kind of event will happen and parts of stories will be revealed to you. But be careful. Some events out there can harm you. In other words, you have to bet your life to get to know the story. If you're almost dead and too weak to get more of the story, use cautious action and do what you can to avoid the event. The drawback to that is you won't uncover the entire story. Also, have you noticed that one of the stage's conditions has changed from traps cleared to story? This is when you'll receive a monetary reward based on how many stories you saw, not how many traps you cleared. Just remember this and you won't get confused. Hey, what do you think of these settings? Do you like it? By the way, if you'd like to see the instructions again, I wrote them down and put them on the ticket booth where they're yours for the taking. Okay, good luck, boys and girls. If you're a real cork like me, you can get through anything, no problem. Yeehaw! Yeah! The doll. <gasps> Welcome home, darling. How was Mexico? Oh, it was horrible. Tell me the story later, in bed, if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I am immortal. Hey, 
What's wrong, Marie? Henry is in trouble? Who's Henry? Cork, did the trip to Mexico make you crazy? Henry is the boy who owns us. You know, the guy who's so nice oh, to us. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what's the, um, Henry boy's problem, anyway? He's really sick. Oh! <sighs> Henry, sleep in peace. Here's your favorite sexy doll. She'll come for you. Cork, darling, I love you, but I guess this is our goodbye. No! <sighs> Cork left the house when he lost his beloved lover, Sexy Doll. He wandered and wandered for days. He found himself walking toward the graveyard where Henry was buried. <sighs>
never forget the first time we had together. Sexy doll. I wanted to see you one last time. And that really hurt Gork deeply. All he could hear was that word hopeless echoing over and over. Gork was so depressed he really did lose hope. Instead of being a super toy hero, he turned into a worthless bum. I know! <sighs> Do you know that I'm 
Captain Cork, hey, I know this boy so well. He couldn't save his sexy doll. He ended up in hell. And as far as Texas gunmen go, he's chicken through and through. There is no bigger coward, no. There's nothing he can do. Lock him up for 500 years. No, we shall get a death penalty. I hear ya, I hear ya. Yeah, kill the bum and send him to hell. Roger that. Cell number 577.
the defendant, Quark, according to the Toy Penal Code 99. You are sentenced to death. You'll be hung at six o'clock and go directly to hell. No way! doing over there? You came just in time. I tried to escape from this prison, but I ran out of gas. Hey! Aren't you Cork? Who couldn't save the sexy doll? <sighs> it is you! My name is Ponty Don. I've been in prison for 19 years. But first things first, buddy. Don't just stand there. Find me some gasoline. Once I'm loose, I'll tell you a great story. Gas? Okay, sure. <sighs> relief. I thought it was a goner for sure. Thank you. You must have received a death sentence to have ended up here. Well, yeah. So, uh, what's your great story? Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, how'd you like to pick up a game with sexy dogs? Who's been kidnapped and taken to hell? 
The best way to do that is by actually getting executed. <laughs> Easy. Huh? What are you talking about? According to the toy bible I read a long time ago, you go to hell for sure if you're executed. See? You mean I can rendezvous with sexy doll if they hang me? Yep, that's the deal. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Don't get too excited. Isn't it time for an execution? Leaving death row to be hung right now. Thanks, Adol. We'll be together again soon. <laughs> I made it just in time! What the hell are you? <laughs> what was that for? I wanted to die!
There you are. Why did you interrupt my execution? I was on my way to see Sexy Doll again. I did that because I found out you shouldn't get executed after all. Why? After you left, I checked the toy bible again, and I realized I remembered it wrong. You see, the type of hell in which Sexy Doll is being held is called Toy Hell. It's the hell toys go through if the toys get buried in the grave along with its owner. If you die in any other way, you just go to plain old hell, which is not what Sexy Doll is waiting for you. Ooh, that wouldn't have been Yeah, good. that was close, my friend. If I had shown up a minute later, you'd have died for nothing. <laughs> That'll teach me to listen to you. I will tell you another good story. Another lie? No, this really is a great one. This sewer tunnel leads to a town where humans live. Now once you get there, find a kid who will be your owner and share a coffin together. Then you can go to toy hell. Isn't that a great plan? Trust me, this time it'll work out. Hey, we ought to bust out of here before the wardens find us. Hop on my back, cause it's kind of a long way to where the humans are. Ready? Here we go! Sorry, Cork. I guess you'll have to walk the rest of the way down the tunnel. Remember, find the child, and find one who's near death. Oh no, I'm dizzy now. Hey, take the chip out from my body and take it with you. When you find the same kind of toy as me, just put this chip into it. Then you can see me again. <laughs> I think this is it for me. Go, Cork. You gotta go. Don't give up! Find the kid! He's tired.
This is cool! Whoa! It's my good! Ouch! What a rough kid! Wait a minute. I got owned by a kid again. That means I could go to Toy Hill and meet my sexy doll! Hi! We meet again! Bododon! It's really you! You made it through the tunnel, Cork. I even found my new owner. Look at that kid. What the? That's not the kid I was talking about. He's healthy as hell. You can't meet with Sexy Doll until you get buried in a coffin. Oh, yeah. You're right. Gosh, what would you do without me, hmm? <laughs> That's it! Here, we can use this and shoot that kid. Catch! Are you serious? You're gonna use this? We're not gonna kill him for real. Just knock him unconscious with this. We're gonna make people think he's dead. Use this and shoot that kid. Now's the chance. Shoot him! Me? I'm the one to shoot him? Now's the chance. Shoot him! <laughs> Jeremy! What happened? Yeah, yeah, we, we did, did it! It, it was a success! My poor Jeremy. Ah, oh, sleep in peace. Here, I'll put your favorite toy on the door with you. Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah! I can meet my darling sexy doll at last!
really missed you, honey. But don't come over here, darling. Sexy doll! This monster makes short work of you. <laughs> Zodic! You cannot get away with this, you mother! My dear sexy doll. <laughs> what the hell? What's wrong? Didn't Gork win? Hmm, <laughs> it's strange. What does Zodic's strength gauge show? It's zero. What about the ring setting over there? Check if the damage count and parameters weren't misread. I'm checking now. This is not going well. Oh no! Look at that! The ring setting is on 80! What? You inputted the wrong settings, didn't you? No! I, I swear I set it to 8! Whatever! Just set it back to normal. I can't! Until the player completely clears the setting, it can't be reset. You mean they have to battle nine more times? What's going on, darling? I have no idea, baby. Seems like they're having some trouble. Well, there's no choice. They must battle it out nine more times. What? They're gonna die if they do that. What else can we do? Ugh. Why? Hey, why are you stopping it? We can't do this to him. If the challenger's parameter hits zero during the battle, you don't know what's gonna happen. And if they get into an infinite loop, 
then we're really out of control. We won't know until we actually try it. Hey, Cork. Wow, I see a lovely lady there by your side. Does that mean you already knocked out Zodic? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna get involved with this. You write the report later, then. What do you mean? You're the one who made the mistake with the settings. No, I didn't! That's why I hate using a former wood puppet. You guys have no brain. Especially the ones who used to lay down on the belt conveyors. I remember when you were a monkey. You got all excited handling the horror monitor. Talk about brainless. What do you mean, you blockhead? Hey, watch it! Oh, now you want to play tough, huh? What's going on here? I have no idea. Why don't we just go? Good idea. Hey, hold it on. Will you give us a ride? How'd I know that was coming? Well, okay, let's get a move on. <laughs> oh, brother, that's about all the softy stuff I can handle for today.
Congratulations, fortunate visitors. You've managed to make it to the last room before you'll get out of ill bleed. A hundred million dollars awaits you if you can make it through in one piece. Ah, uh, 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 not so fast. I, Michael Reynolds, have a very special gift for you first. Uh, come, come now, don't be scared. It's just a painting. This one's by Stuart Milburn, who's been my art director on the films I make. As you see, here is his signature. There are three paintings you can choose from, actually. Maybe you'd like some help deciding. <laughs> Make your decision wisely, as you only get one.
fantastic. <laughs> I haven't had this much excitement in a long time. <clears throat> Very well, then. I shall present you with one hundred million dollars. And here, for the fanfare, is the Michael Reynolds Orchestra. I'm a man of my word. Here, I present you one hundred million dollars. All right, nice to you. Hope to see you again someday. Congratulations. Good luck. Bye-bye.
How are we gonna spend a million bucks? I bought 385 different kinds of Freddy dolls, and I still have a lot left. I invested in the stock market. You really trust the stock market? I don't know. I think so. Erico, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Never mind. She's probably in one of her philosophical moods. Hey, Erico, are you thinking of your secret love or something? Maybe it's me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind that at all. I'm going back to real bleed. What? 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 If she goes, I go! Thanks, Randy. But this time, I have to go alone. Why? What's going on? Kevin, butt out! She doesn't need a guy right now, okay? Wait for me, guys. If I make it back, I'll probably be a changed girl. We'll be right here, waiting and praying. I'm sure you'll make it through, but be careful. And don't change too much. If you get into trouble, try and telepathically communicate with me, okay? I can be at your side in no time. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. I love you all. Thank you.